In the years following World War II, American agricultural machinery manufacturers faced somewhat of a critical decision. They could either continue exporting expensive tractors across the Atlantic, paying steep import duties and shipping costs, or they could build factories on European soil and compete directly with local manufacturers. International Harvester chose the latter, and in doing so, they created one of the most successful tractors ever built on German soil, the McCormick D324. Let's see how a Chicago-based corporation planted its flag in the heart of Europe and produced a machine that would become a workhorse for thousands of farmers across the continent. The roots of International Harvester in Europe stretch back decades before any tractor rolled off a European assembly line. Both the McCormick and Deering companies had established sales branches in Germany during the 1880s, selling American-made reapers and agricultural equipment to European farmers. When these two rivals merged in 1902 to form International Harvester, they inherited a network of dealerships and customers already familiar with the red machinery. By 1908, International Headquarters in Chicago recognized an opportunity. Demand for agricultural equipment in Germany was growing rapidly, but import taxes and shipping costs were eating into profits. The solution was obvious. Build locally. On December 31, 1908, the International Harvester Company GmbH was officially established in Germany, headquartered at Neuss am Rhein. The location was chosen strategically. Situated in the Hafengebiet, the harbour district of Neuss, the factory had direct access to the Rhine River. This meant raw materials could arrive by barge and finished products could be shipped efficiently across Germany and into neighbouring countries. The corporation purchased 100,000 square metres of land in 1909 and construction began the following year. By 1911, the Neuss plant was manufacturing hay tenders, hay rakes, mowers, reapers and fertiliser spreaders all branded under the Deering and McCormick names. The Great War of 1914 to 1918 hit the news operation hard. Personnel shortages and raw material scarcity crippled production. The troubles continued after the armistice. In 1924, French forces occupied the Ruhr Valley, forcing the plant to halt all operations for three months. The worldwide economic depression that followed nearly finished what war had started. But American capital kept the German subsidiary alive. Loans from Chicago allowed the factory to survive, and by 1934, the Neuss plant celebrated its 25th anniversary with total production exceeding 45,000 agricultural machines. Then came a new threat, not from war, but from politics. Beginning in January 1933, the National Socialist government began implementing policies designed to make Germany self-sufficient. Foreign companies faced increasingly hostile conditions. Starting in 1935, exorbitant taxes on imported tractors made shipping machines from America financially impossible. The Nazi regime wanted complete independence from foreign imports. For International Harvester, this presented a choice. Abandon Germany entirely or adapt to survive. International chose to adapt. In 1936, construction began on new tractor production lines at Neuss. American engineers provided the technical knowledge and American creditors provided the financing. In May 1937, the first tractors built entirely in Germany rolled off the assembly line, the Model F 12G and I 12G. The G stood for Germany. These machines were adaptations of the American Farmall F-12, modified for European requirements with increased power delivery through the power takeoff shaft and pulleys. By 1940, production had evolved to the FG model with rubber tires and the FS model equipped with steel wheels. Fuel shortages and a complete ban on civilian gasoline use forced extreme changes. From 1943 to 1944, the Neuss plant converted existing tractors to run on wood gas, producing 144 units of the HS and HG models running on this alternative fuel derived from burning wood. By the time Allied forces approached in early 1945, roughly 70% of the Neuss plant lay in ruins from bombing raids. In March 1945, Neuss am Rhein was completely captured. 
This was devastating. The reconstruction of the operation began in May 1945 under British occupation. Chicago headquarters committed an astonishing $17 million to rebuild the shattered facility, an insane sum for the era. By November 1945, British troops had withdrawn and the factory received permits for emergency production of desperately needed replacement parts. Farmers across Germany needed equipment to rebuild their devastated agricultural sector. By August 1946, Model FS and FG tractors were once again leaving the factory gates. But the old gasoline engines were becoming increasingly difficult to sell. German farmers wanted diesel power, more efficient, more economical, more reliable. The news engineers knew they needed a diesel engine of their own design. In November 1950, they delivered. The DF-25 became the first noose-built tractor with an in-house self-starting diesel motor. It was also the last machine to carry the dual McCormick Deering brand name that had been used since 1948. Production expanded through the early 1950s with the D models offering 12, 20 and 30 horsepower in two, three and four cylinder diesel configurations. More than 22,000 units sold across these three models. By 1965, the Neuse facility employed approximately 5,000 workers. These first-generation D-line tractors established the foundation for what came next. February 1956 marked a turning point. International News unveiled an entirely reworked second-generation D-line with new styling, improved equipment and an expanded model range designed to meet every segment of the European market. The new lineup included two-cylinder and three-cylinder engines. The Farmall tractor line now included the two-cylinder D212 and D217, the three-cylinder D320 and D324, and the four-cylinder D430. Among these, one model would stand above all others in terms of commercial success. The 324 entered production in February 1956 and would remain in the lineup until April 1962. During those six years, 24,495 units left the news factory, making it the most successful model ever produced at the German facility. The designation itself told the story, D for diesel, 3 for three cylinders, 24 for horsepower. The tractor was initially marketed as the Farmall D324, but by 1960, Harvester dropped the Farmall name from European models and the badge simply read McCormick. Beneath the red sheet metal sat the international DD-111 diesel engine, a water-cooled four-stroke inline three-cylinder unit with swirl chamber injection. A Bosch injection pump fed the combustion chambers and a thermostat-regulated cooling system kept temperatures in check. The standard transmission offered six forward speeds and one reverse, but buyers could specify the optional agriomatic gearbox, an innovative transmission offering eight forward speeds and two reverse gears. This transmission was revolutionary for its time. It featured an independent power takeoff, allowing operators to shift through the gear range without double clutching and providing remote controls for implement operation. The PTO operated at the standard 540 RPM and the three-point hitch could lift 600 kilograms at the drawbar. Drum brakes on all four wheels provided stopping power and the overall weight came to 1.3 metric tons. The 324 proved so versatile that specialized versions soon appeared. In 1961, the factory converted 151 units into narrow track vigneron models, vineyard tractors designed for working between the tight rows of European wine country. Another 55 units followed in 1962. These narrow machines could navigate spaces that standard agricultural tractors simply could not reach, opening new markets in France, Germany and Italy where wine production demanded specialized equipment. The D324 competed in the most contested segment of the European tractor market, the 20 to 30 horsepower utility class. German manufacturers like Deutz, Fendt and Lanz offered capable machines. So did British and French competitors. Yet the amazing tractor found buyers because it offered something competitors struggled to match. 
the combination of proven American engineering adapted specifically for European conditions, backed by the service network and parts availability of a global corporation. The tractor was considered an ideal compromise for medium-sized farms, modest power output, mechanical simplicity and robust construction. It could handle ploughing, cultivation, haymaking and transport duties equally well. In 1965, International Harvester consolidated its European operations into a unified manufacturing network called the Fertigungsverbund. This brought together the Neuss plant in Germany, the facilities at Croix and Saint-Dizier in France, and the Doncaster and Bradford factories in England. Under this arrangement, engine production centered at Neuss while transmissions were built at Saint-Dizier. Each factory then assembled complete tractors for its regional market. Components flowed between facilities, creating efficiencies that helped IH compete against established European manufacturers on their home ground. But the parent corporation in America was struggling. A devastating strike in 1979 and 1980 crippled operations. High interest rates and agricultural recessions squeezed farmers who could no longer afford new equipment. By 1984, International Harvester was hemorrhaging money. On November 23rd that year, Tenneco finalized the purchase of their agricultural division and 13 years later, in 1997, the last red tractor rolled off the Neuss assembly line, a Maxim 5150, known as one of the most powerful and durable tractors ever produced in Germany. The final units now preserved at the Seinsteden Agricultural Museum near the original factory site. In total, approximately 600,000 tractors were built at Neuss during its operational lifetime. Today, thousands of D324 tractors remain in service or are cherished by collectors across Europe. Their simple diesel engines and robust construction made them nearly indestructible. Parts remain available. Knowledge of their maintenance lives on through enthusiast communities and specialized dealers. The designation represents more than just a successful tractor model. It embodies the story of how American agricultural innovation crossed the Atlantic, adapted to European conditions, survived world wars and economic upheaval, and ultimately shaped the mechanization of farming across an entire continent. When International Harvester launched its assault on Europe, the 324 was among its most effective weapons. Nearly seven decades later, that assault's legacy still echoes across fields from the Rhine to the Rhone.